Okay, so tonight we have a short video um, learning about selection coding. So let's get into it. So by the end of this video, the intention is that you'll be able to understand why selection constructs are used in programming. So there are three basic constructs in programming that we're going to learn about first off. And those constructs are sequence, selection, and iteration. Sequence means that you do one step after the other following on one particular path. Selection means being able to choose between alternative steps and iteration means to be looping or repeating some steps over and over again. Now without being aware of you, you've already been introduced to sequencing um, where steps are performed one after the other in a set order and no two steps happen at the same time. Now I want you to imagine a train line where basically the train goes along and it will go and stop at each individual stop. Um, we know that Binary Bay comes after Code Vale. We know that Digitalville comes first and the train will go along that line and it will execute or go to each one of those stops on the line. That's how sequence programming happens. It will start at the beginning. It will go through each individual step until it gets to the end. No deviation, no change. So sequence programming is actually what we have been doing so far. We have been starting off with an instruction. We've been given a series of instructions. Your program will start at the top, the stop, top instruction and will work its way down through each one of the instructions. So you'll notice here we have the first two questions from the last lesson that you're working on. Question one and question two. And both of these are simple sequence programs. So they will start at the first one. So in question one, we'll start at step two or line two. Line two will be executed, then line three will be executed and line four will be executed. And that will be the end of that program. The second one, line seven will be executed, line eight will be executed, line nine, line 10, line 11. None of the lines, none of the, the code is skipped it's all be executed one after the other. And that is what sequence programming or sequence constructs are about. Now selection constructs is when it's programming starts getting a little bit more complicated and also a little bit more useful. Basically a selection is where you make a choice between one of two or more possible steps to follow, right? You need to select which path to follow and you can only choose one. And at the end of the branching, at the end of the split, you'll return to a single pathway. So coming back to our train track analogy, our train can start and it'll get to Digitalville. And once it gets to Digitalville, it has a choice. And it can keep going along the same path it has been doing and go to Code Vale and Binary Bay. Or it can go down the other path, the second path here, and go down to Ram Road and GPO Grove, GPU Grove. Once it's finished, it will come back and join back up at the main program. Now it can't choose to take both paths. It has to choose one or the other. So this is what we call selection. So let's start looking at what selection looks like um, in a bit more detail. So here's an example here where someone is going to enter a grade and work out whether that grade or find out whether that grade is a pass or a fail. So the first step is we're getting the user to input their grade and then we come down to this little diamond here. Now this diamond is called a conditional or it's the condition and what it means is you put a test, you test a particular value. In this case, we're testing the grade that has been entered. And we're going to determine whether it meets a particular condition. And that condition is whether it is greater than or equal to 50. If it is greater than or equal to 50, it's true. And therefore, this path will be followed and it will print pass. If it's not greater than, or equal to 50. So if this if this condition is not true, if it's false, then I'll come down this path and it'll print fail on the screen. So for example, if we put in a value of 70 and it'll come down here, I'll say is 70 greater than or equal to 50? Yes, 
is true, it will print pass. If we put in a value of 40, then you'll come down here, is the grade greater than or equal to 50? The condition is not true, it's false. So therefore, it will print fail. So what's that look like in code? So here's the code. Now don't worry too much about this because we're going to go over if and else statements in class. But just to give you an idea of how this will work in, very similar, we recognize here where we've taken a string input, we've converted it into an integer, and then we've assigned it to the variable called grade. So now we come down, and this is a new code that you guys haven't seen before in line three here. It says, if the value of grade is greater than or equal to 50, then you do what's in the indent down here. So you will print. And then you will, once you've completed that, go to the end of the statement and continue on with the program. In this case, the program finishes. So if grade, so if we, again, if we put in 70, 70 come down here, we'll say if grade is greater than 70, which or greater than 50, which 70 is, it will print pass. Now, if we clear that, and instead, if we said, if we put in, oh, that's a bad four. That's not much better. I'm going to clear both of those because they're embarrassing. And I'm going to give up on my fours. We put in 40 again. Your raw input 40. Grade becomes 40. If grade is grade greater than or equal to 50, no, this doesn't pass this condition. So instead of executing this code here, instead it will come down. So this doesn't this doesn't pass. And so instead it will come down and it will go into the else and it will execute this code here and print fail. Again, don't worry about too much about the detail. We will cover this in class, but just to give you an idea of that's how selection works in code. Now we've got four questions after this for you to complete. Uh, make sure you just go through their multiple choice, won't take too much. And then we'll see you in the next class. We'll have a chance to have a go at all this fun. Catch ya.